welcome to this guide for the unfinished business deck which was part of the first DLC pack for Magic 2014 which just came out a few weeks ago. I've already played a lot of games with this deck and I'm very happy with my current build which I'll go over in just a second. But first I wanted to discuss the different archetypes you can have with the deck because there's a lot of cards available so you can take the deck in a lot of different directions. I think the most common one is the all-in reanimation deck which just tries to put a big creature into play as quickly as possible and that's also the deck I'm gonna be discussing today. Uh, then there's also the more controlling version of the deck which plays more removal spells and tries to prolong the game so you can just cast the big creatures without having to reanimate them or just use its reanimate spells for value instead of as a win condition. And then thirdly there's also the mono black version of this deck which doesn't play the blue draw spells but instead just plays all the black creatures and the black reanimation spells. So the version I'll be discussing today is the all-in reanimation deck so all the cards will be judged accordingly and in every reanimation deck there's usually three major components first there's the discard outlet which is a way to easily discard cards from your hand into the graveyard secondly there's the reanimation spell which puts a creature from your graveyard onto the battlefield and uh, thirdly of course there's the reanimation target which usually is a very big creature that can end the game in a couple turns the first card on our list is Pewtered Imp, which is our most important discard outlet in the deck. And it might look like an innocent 1-1, but don't be fooled, because this is actually a very powerful card in this strategy. It's a very early discard outlet, so you can get it into play on turn 1 and set up a turn 2 Exhum or Reanimate. And it also gains flying when you do discard a card, so you can get in for some early points of damage. You can also activate this as many times as you want. You can do this at instant speed, so you can do this during your opponent's turn if you want to. And Putridimp also has a threshold, so as long as you have 7 or more cards in your graveyard, it gets plus 1 plus 1 and cannot block. And I want to stress the cannot block part, because I've had a couple of games where I had to block with Putrid Imp, but it had threshold activated, so I could no longer, so I ended up losing the game because of it. Still, it's a very important card and I'm running all four. The next card on our list is Reanimate. This is the cheapest reanimation spell we have. It only costs one black, but it does come at a cost because we do have to pay life equal to the converted mana cost of the creature we are reanimating. So be careful when using this in the late game. But since we are a all-in reanimation deck, we usually cast this on turn two. And there's also a little trick you can do you can uh, choose on the draw not to play a land, so you go up to 8 cards, then you discard a creature to your hand size, and then uh, next turn you can play a swamp and cast reanimate to reanimate the creature on turn 2. And you can also reanimate your opponent's creatures should that come up. Next on our list is accumulated knowledge. It just serves the purpose of drawing us into the missing pieces that we need and it also synergizes nicely with all the discard that's going on because you'll end up with more than one accumulated knowledge in your graveyard so you can start drawing multiple cards just for the low low cost of one and the blue. I'm only running one Doomblade because it's not really contributing to our reanimation plan and we usually don't care what our opponent is doing in the early turns because what we are doing is much stronger and they have to answer our creatures and not the other way around. Sea Beyond is another cheap draw spell and it usually shows you more cards than accumulated knowledge does so there's a higher chance of finding the missing piece and at first I didn't like the card because it doesn't synergize with your graveyard plan but it's actually just a good card and they only gave you one so I'm running it and if they gave me four I would probably run it instead of the accumulated knowledges, but they only gave me one, so I'm running one. Exhum is probably the most important reanimation card in the deck, because it doesn't have the drawback of losing your life like reanimate does. It does cost one more, but that's usually negligible, and the fact that it's pretty one-sided in the early game, as your opponent usually doesn't have a creature in his graveyard, 
makes this card very very good as it's basically one and a black and you can choose a creature card from your graveyard and put it onto the battlefield. You can't ask for more. Consultant Necrosages is a very versatile card because it can serve as a discard outlet because you can target yourself and discard two cards but you can also use it as a divination to simply draw two cards or you can also make your opponent discard two cards which makes it a mind rot so a very versatile card so I'm definitely playing it they only gave me one so I'm playing the one copy Windfall is a very interesting card it's a draw spell but it's also a discard outlet and it can turn a bad hand into a very good hand it does have some risk involved especially if your opponent has less cards in hand than you do because then you're giving them a bunch of new cards and it's also risky if you try and cast an exhum uh, later because then your opponent will have a lot of creatures in the graveyard so you gotta be careful but the card does have a very high upside as it can turn a bad hand into a very good hand so I like the one copy there next up is sift this is as you can see our only four drop in the deck as we're playing all four of them it's a very versatile draw spell because it's also a discard outlet so you get to see three cards and then you get to discard a creature of your choice usually uh, which means if you draw any reanimation spells you've got the whole trifecta all in one next up is Gastlord which is somewhere in between a reanimation target and just a good creature you can cast on turn 5 if you happen to reanimate him he's still fine as he can start taking your opponent's hand apart but it's also a very easy creature to cast on turn 5 as the hybrid mana cost is very friendly on your mana base Body Double is one of the few more expensive reanimation spells we are playing and the reason is simply because it's not really a reanimation spell it doesn't take the creature from the graveyard onto the battlefield it simply copies it which means if you have another real reanimation spell you can have the same creature twice on the battlefield uh, and you only need to have one in the graveyard to make this happen living death serves both as a sweeper and as a reanimation spell as it can destroy your opponent's creatures and then put all your creatures you've assembled in your graveyard onto the battlefield there are very few cards that can swing games like living death can so it's very powerful and don't be afraid to use this just as a sweeper or just as a reanimation spell because either one of those is very good we have finally arrived to our real reanimation targets and as you'll notice most of them have some sort of evasion be it flying or trample you just want your big creatures to have some sort of evasion so your opponent cannot start chum blocking with small creatures while he can keep attacking with other ones because that's not a recipe for success Kaiga is a formidable reanimation target because not only can it just kill your opponent in four attacks but it can also actually stabilize the board and if your opponent tries to kill it you can just steal your opponent's best creature and keep attacking with that one so just a very good card all around Sphinx of Magosi does everything you want it to do it kills your opponent in a couple attacks and in the meantime it draws you a bunch of cards so you cannot go wrong with the Sphinx next up is Extractor Demon which synergizes very well with the other cards in the deck it's sometimes just a 5-5 flyer which isn't bad but it can also fuel your graveyard by putting more cards in it uh, some of them could be accumulated knowledges which is good and some of them could be other reanimation targets which is also good and you can also unearth it for two and a black which means you can put him from your graveyard onto the battlefield give it haste and for one turn you can attack with it if you want so if you do this through your putrid dimp that can be very unexpected for your opponent and five damage could swing the game in your favor Runescar Demon is probably my favorite reanimation target because it's very resilient in a way because if you reanimate him and you for example have another reanimation target but don't have another reanimation spell you can just search up that other reanimation spell so you have a backup creature in case they remove the Runescar Demon and he's also just a very big flyer that can kill your opponent very quickly 
reanimating a Tide Spout Tyrant on turn 2 won't make you a lot of friends, but it will win you a lot of games, as you get to bounce a permanent whenever you cast a spell after him, and that does include land, so you can completely shut down your opponent and likely steal a game. Next on the list is Scion of Darkness, which serves a double role. Not only is it a discard outlet, because you get to cycle him for 3 mana, which means you discard him and draw a card, but he's also a fine reanimation target, as he does have evasion with the trample, and if he hits your opponent, you get to reanimate one of your opponent's creatures, which cannot be bad. Our final reanimation target, and also our final card in the deck, is none other than Demon of Death's Gate, which is a 9-9 flying trampler, so if you combine him with a couple attacks from your Putrid Imp, you can kill your opponent in just two attacks. And his alternate casting cost doesn't come up very often, but you can keep it in mind. Alright, so that concludes the main deck. Now I will go over the cards that didn't make the main deck and try to explain why they didn't. If I do have a turn 1 Putrid Imp into a turn 2 Exhum, I don't want my lands to come into play tapped. So that's the reason why I'm not running Evolving Wilds and instead I'm just running 13 Swamps and 11 Islands because we have more cheap black spells than blue spells. The reason why Una's Prowler didn't make it is simply because if we cast an Exhum and our opponent discards a big creature in response then we don't have the advantage of having the one-sided Exhum and perhaps our opponent's creature is even bigger than ours so I know this is currently bugged in 1v1, so your opponent cannot activate it, but just from a moral standpoint, I'm not running it. Demir Cutpurse doesn't fit the strategy of the deck, so he doesn't make it. Demir Doppelganger isn't bad, but it's just a little too slow. I know it does synergize well with a Living Death, as you can exile your opponent's creatures, but it's just a little too slow for the way I am running the deck. And I'm also not playing Cunning Ladamancer for the same reason as I'm not running Una's Prowler and that's because our opponent could discard a creature and then get it back with a Exhum so we don't want that to happen, so we don't run him. Doomed Necromancer is also fine, but again a little too slow for my likings. Hidden Horror is no reliable discard outlet it's also not a very good reanimation target, and it's also pretty difficult to cast on turn 3 because we aren't running the Evolving Wilds. Body Double is already in the main deck, but I couldn't find a spot for the second copy. River Kelpie is just a little too expensive for what it's doing. It's not a win condition, and we do have better draw spells in the deck. I did have Rexil in the deck for a while, but because he only has evasion against blue and black decks, he isn't as reliable as I would like him to be, so that's why he didn't make it. Cerulean Sphinx just doesn't do as much as our other reanimation targets, it's basically just a 5-5 flyer, because the ability is pretty irrelevant. Silent Blade Oni just doesn't qualify as an evasive reanimation target. Goliath Sphinx does have evasion, and he's probably next in line to make the deck, but unfortunately he doesn't have any additional abilities like the cards in the deck do. Pretty much the same can be said for Tidal Kraken. Fool's Demise is just bad. Doomblade is a fine card, but I already discussed why I'm only running one. Undermine also isn't really contributing to the reanimation game plan, and it's also pretty slow as a counterspell and difficult to cast, and the life loss also is pretty irrelevant. Gather Specimens is just too expensive and it's not part of the animation game plan. Distress is a fine disruptive card, but we don't really want to make our opponent discard a creature because it doesn't synergize with our Exhum. Victimize is just a little too difficult to make work because you do need two cards in your graveyard that you can target, otherwise you cannot even cast a card. Diabolic Tutor is a fine card as it can find your missing piece, but it's just doing that a little too slowly, so that's why it didn't make it. 
Beacon of Unrest and Rise from the Grave are a little too expensive and although Rise from the Grave has the advantage of dodging Doomblade, it doesn't have the advantage of Body Double where it keeps the creature in the graveyard. The Cree of Pain is a very interesting sweeper but getting up to 8 mana isn't easy and although you can cycle it at instant speed for 5, it's still a little slow. I would probably run this in the controlling version of the deck but not in the all-in reanimation deck where you don't really care about your opponent's creatures. So this concludes my guide on the unfinished business deck. You can always request another deck guide in the comments below. But for now I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day.